Do you ever feel like your play group and people at your LSG play the same because they use the same card recommendations and strategy content from EDH Rec? What if I told you we had different ideas for deck building? Escape the monotone commander gameplay and try this. Who's that? Commander Claw. Who's bad? Commander Claw. Welcome to episode number five of the 10 Minute Commander Guide series where we quickly describe one or two possibilities on how to build around your commander. Our goal is to share new deck ideas and discover cards in order to build your decks faster with more synergy and have more fun. Today's video is about Zeatora, the Incinerator. Meet the 66 Flying Demon Dragon, who is the crime lord and boss for the Riveteers family from the streets of Nukopana. The lengthy description of her ability can be summed up as this, fling other creatures and cash in with three treasure tokens. I guess you could say she has commitment issues. Most players' first thoughts are to fling powerful green stompy creatures, like Galta or low CMC high power black creatures, such as, say, Register or 66 Demons. But if you want your strategy to reward you differently than most decks, think Death Triggers. Zeator or Mana Value Cost consists of green, black, red, color combination known as Jund. We look at Jund as a circle of life and death, and you can portray that within your EDH deck. So this leads us to our ideal creature type, Spirits. Dig deep into those bulk crates and find those often overlooked Kami Spirits from the Kami Gawa block. That's right, you finally get to use the Soul Shift mechanic. What is Soul Shift? Soul Shift is a triggered ability that means when a creature with Soul Shift dies, its controller can bring it back another spirit of, of a specified converted mana cost or less from the graveyard to your hand. Now you can see we want to sacrifice valuable spirit creatures with Zeator and return another spirit to our hand from the graveyard. Moving on to our strategy, feel free to pause the video to look at the cards closely. First, we will want to mill ourselves to place spirit creatures into the graveyard. Next, cast reanimate spells to pull the big creatures out faster before Zeator. Once Zeator is on the field, we have the option to keep attacking with the powerful spirits or fling them and trigger their soul shift ability to return a spirit back to our hand. As an additional layer to our strategy, we want our creatures to boost power and toughness of other creatures when an ETB or death trigger occurs. Moving on to our top 8 spiritual creatures, we have Malignus. This card is amazing in Commander. It could possibly be a 40-40 creature for 5 mana and sacrificing it using Zeotora, targeting a player, ending their life. Its power and toughness is all based on half of one of your opponent's life total. This potentially overpowering elemental spirit will stir up the politics at the table. Kodama of the East Tree. Slam down an extra permanent of equal or lesser value. Sounds like you're using a coupon book here. Ideally, you will use her ability to drop an extra soul shift creature on the same turn you cast a bigger creature. Kodama of the East Tree leaves room for creativity. Kura the Boundless Sky. Death triggers galore. Either creating an XX spirit creature equal to the amount of lands or fetch three mana from your library and put them into your hand. This dragon spirit is definitely of the utility category. Myojin of Towering Might. Here comes the big stompy green creature at an 8-8 without attributes, except an indestructible counter if you cast it from your hand. Don't worry, you will have another way to add an indestructible counter to him using Daring Fiend Bonder, who you just happen to mill. Then his ability can only be used from the graveyard. Oh my god, your opponents never saw that coming. Junji, the Midnight Sky. Here is when you sacrifice Junji. You can reanimate one of your big spirit creatures or any other player's creatures. Or choose his first ability, making them discard and lose two life. Spectral Force. Five mana for an 8-8 spirit that is terrifying. However, the drawback stops him for a turn if you attack. But at the same time, keeping him as a temporary defender, players are not tapping creatures sideways to attack you. Atomaro's first to desire is a 3 CMC spirit that can exploit those no maximum hand size players. He may be situational, but sometimes situationals win those games. Skyfire Kirin. This fiery flying horse will keep your opponent's creatures in their hands versus the battlefield. You can literally gain control of their creature and sacrifice it using Zeatora. Before we move on to the top soul shift cards, this mechanic works well in Jundex because Jundex often go top decking and wait to draw the next big threat. If you have creatures that return creatures to your hand, they act as pseudo reanimate cards. Returning to the spirit creatures, Body of Jukai is a towering 8-5 tree reincarnation and is the symbol of the Jukai forest from the Kamigawa lore. He is one of your premier soul shift creatures at soul shift 8. He can return 8 CMC Myojins to your hand. He is a top priority to cheat into play with reanimate spells. Promise Kanushi. I promise you, your opponents won't see this coming. And yes, it's a human druid, but with soul shift 7, you will be able to return almost all of your powerful spirits except Myojins. 
Fork Branch Garami. This abomination gives your spirit tribal deck double soul shift four triggers alongside a solid power and toughness. Night Soul Kami. Soul shift five is that mid-level number that can return Junji, Kura, and Spectral Force to your hand, creating the cycle of life and death. Thousand Legged Kami is another expensive green creature. However, Solstice 7, 7 is very appealing. Yes, Cheetah meant to play with the reanimate spells, and he's high enough to almost return any of your creatures. And remember, when you're using Zeator, you're creating three treasure tokens. Reanimate spells. To play this deck effectively, you're going to have to reanimate and put your valuable creatures on the battlefield early and for a low CMC. However, the most reanimate spells we are playing are risky, yet rewarding. By turn 3, most opponents can't handle a 8-8 with abilities on the board. You would rather waste their removal spells on other creatures than Zeatora. One of the most trickiest elements about magic is how each player analyzes threats. Our early game reanimated spells are 2 CMC and they are Animate Dead. It is a black staple enchantment that's around $4. Next up is Exhum, making this one of the very best early game reanimation spells ever. The reanimated player can cast his turn one or two with a creature in his graveyard, giving them the advantage because most likely other players won't have a creature threat in the graveyard that early. Our late game or push to board state reanimated spells are Dread Return is a 4 CMC. Nothing feels better than when you capitalize on self-milling tactics with Flashback. This might be the only reanimate spell with Flashback and, more, and Magic. If you built up three insect tokens from Crawling Infestation, that will work perfectly for the Flashback. Patriarch's Bidding. Since we're a spirit tribal, this is a no-brainer. You can return all spirits to the battlefield. Beware, this is a situational type of card. Reincarnation. Never before seen green instant reanimation, and it's only around 50 cents. This is hard to beat for an exchanging a meat creature for a large one that's been milled into your graveyard. Goryo's Vengeance. Gotta love it for its arcane mechanic here. Literally, you're able to add this effect and never cast this card, always keeping it in your hand. Next, finally, we have Whip of Erebos. Must have four reanimated decks. Just know if you sack your creature to Zayator and use Whip of Erebos to bring the creature back to the battlefield, you will have to exile the creature because Erebos says if it would leave the battlefield, exile instead of putting it anywhere else. Moving on to Self Mill. Mulch is probably one of my favorite Self Mill cards because it allows you to return all lands that would be milled this way. Out of Whoa! Corpse Churn for two mana at instant speed possibly pulls the much needed creature from your deck into your hand. Yes, that's a possibility with a little bit of luck. For more self milling cards, we have Cemetery Tampering. For three mana, at the beginning of your upkeep, you may mill three cards. Then if there are 20 or more cards in your graveyard, you may play the exile card without paying its mana cost. You hit away a card when you first cast this, and you look at your top five, and you're able to cast that card once you reach the 30 card threshold. Next up is Crawling Infestation. It's another three CMC. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may mill two cards. Whenever one or more creature cards are put into the graveyard from anywhere, you may create a 1-1 green insect creature token. This is perfect for creating tokens if you're milling yourself. Next up, we have our honorable mentions. Mr. Orfeo the Boulder and Raga Draga Gorgut's boss are all creature buffs. Mr. Orfeo literally doubles target creature's power, while Orfeo, while Raga Draga actually gives a plus 7, plus 7 when you cast a creature with 7 mana or more. Finally, our last two honorable mentions are Ashes of the Fallen. All your creature cards in your graveyard can be a chosen creature type, and here we're going to choose spirits. Next up is White of Precinct Sinks of six. He can literally be a huge creature, depending how many creature cards are in your opponent's graveyards.